I'd like to introduce our next speaker who's going to talk about diversity and inclusion, and that's Brittany Maxey. Brittany has her own law firm in St. Petersburg. She is a patent attorney and one of a very small number of patent attorneys in the state, obviously. And she's been very, very active in the Hillsborough County area, now in the state bar. And she's going to talk to us about diversity and inclusion and her role as the Diversity and Inclusion Committee Chair. So welcome, Brittany. So as Kevin said, my name is Brittany Maxey, and I am the Chair of the Standing Committee on Diversity and Inclusion. In light of recent and ongoing efforts in our country and worldwide, the importance of understanding and providing conscious consideration and respect to those who may simply differ in appearance, belief, or conviction is paramount. And I am extremely honored to be part of a bar association that is fully committed to diversity and inclusion. To the legal profession, legal education, and in the justice system. And it affirms its commitment toward diversity and inclusion with equal access and opportunity for all. So our committee was formed in 2013 when the Florida Bar Board of Governors approved a recommendation from its PEC committee to merge the Special Committee on Diversity and Inclusion with the Equal Opportunities Law section. This decision was based on a very extensive and thorough PEC review in 2009 to 2010. So our mission as a diversity and inclusion committee of the Florida Bar is to ensure that the bar reflects the demographics of our state, to develop opportunities for community involvement, and to make sure there are leadership roles within the profession that are accessible to all of us. And I'd like to take a moment to read the Board of Governors definition of diversity. The term diversity has a dynamic meaning that changes as the demographics of Floridians change. Apart from differences in race, color, gender, national origin, religion, age, sexual orientation, Citizen, citizenship and geography, just to name a few, the public and our profession will experience changes in thought, culture, and belief. These demographics are constantly in flux, and defining diversity based on current differences would limit its application to future changes and likewise restrict or limit the Florida Bar's consideration of and response to those changes. So as you can see, our Board of Governors have given us a very broad definition of diversity, and I just wanted to point that out today as we look around the room. It is so very important to the Florida Bar that we increase diversity. They've actually, in their 2015 to 2018 strategic plan, named objective number five a standalone objective that reads, we will continue to encourage and promote diversity and inclusion in all aspects of the profession and the justice system. Oh, I think I was supposed to put this up here. There we go. Let's see. Okay, now I'm official. Okay. What's very important to y'all's sections is the Board of Governors has also given us recommendations. And they have requested that each one of you guys that are section chairs, that y'all appoint an ex officio member to serve on our diversity and inclusion committee. And it's very important so that we can increase the communications and the efforts between the sections and the bar. I know the business law section for one has its own diversity initiative. And I wanna make sure that each of the sections appoints a member to serve on our committee as well. I had a good discussion with the reptile section out in the hall uh, about some diversity initi initiatives that they wanna discuss. So please appoint someone from your section to serve on the diversity and inclusion committee. 
you can reach out to Arnell Bryant Willis. Arnell's right here. Uh, and the next 30 days and let us know who your uh, ex officio member will be. And we're having our first actual meeting in conjunction with the uh, Florida Bar's fall meeting in Tampa. And I would love for your member to be a part of that meeting. I wanted to give you a, a brief overview of some of the things that the Diversity and Inclusion Committee will be working on this year. We've got a law school and pipeline initiative that we're working on to increase visibility among the Florida law schools. There'll be a conduit in disseminating information and keeping the uh, committee informed on what's going on from a diversity and inclusion efforts at law schools and to recruit members for y'all section. The other thing that we'll be working on is the grant review and uh, development process. This is actually a subcommittee. Our section every year uh, does a special grant process where we evaluate applications from different VBAs across the state, and we select and award money for diversity and initiative programming that's happening throughout the state. And we've got $50,000 this year that we'll be awarding uh, to the local VBAs. A new subcommittee this year that we're working on is called the Multi Multicultural Program Development Subcommittee, and we are going to have three initiatives there. One is developing a partnership between law enforcement and minority communities regarding interactions between uh, the two, between the two so that if someone is pulled over, uh, they would have a educational card that they could put potentially read and uh, to make sure that the uh, police and the minority communities are working more in conjunction. We've also developed a hate crime resolution in the, on the hills of the Orlando shooting at Pulse nightclub, which is the largest LGBT-focused violence in our U.S. history. And this subcommittee will be working on a protocol that would assist victims of hate crimes, whether it is a, a tragedy or just one incident, so that we have a, a, a bank of attorneys that are willing to uh, assist with pro bono services should those victims victims of the tragedy need it. We also have a Get Involved subcommittee, and this Get Involved subcommittee is going to be working with uh, the Judicial Nominating Commission's Procedure Committee in order to ensure that our Florida Bar appointments and the judiciary is very diverse. And we're having a 2017 conference this year. So this would be a great opportunity for you guys to get involved in the conference and potentially recruit diverse members to your sections. We have left a pen at each one of your uh, seats, and I see that many of you all have already put them on. So I just, I, I, I urge everyone to be very cognizant of diversity and inclusion. Wear your pens, and if there's anything that our committee can do for y'all, sections, please let us know. Any questions? Yes. Curious. Do you have um, bar members reach out to you and say, look, I'd really like, I'd really like to get more involved in my section, but no one seems to notice me. Um, is there any way you can help me get on to committees or leadership positions? Does that come to you? Do, do you ever get Inquiries yes. like that? Yes, I, I do get that. We've had requests where people will reach out and they say that maybe they've attended a section meeting but um, didn't feel did, they didn't know anyone, and so they didn't know where to go from there. Do we definitely have people reaching out that want to be appointed to certain committees or. And do you pass those along to section? I mean, to the chairs of sections? Yes. You do? Okay, so maybe you haven't come to our section yet then. Maybe your section's doing an amazing job. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, Craig. Well, I, I really respect what your section does. I think it, it's one of the most important sections in the Florida Bar. But I had a, I had a question. I'm a parent of two children with autism. And when you were talking about diversity, you mentioned a lot of the forms of diversity that you know, people commonly think about. But has, has there been much talk about uh, diversity like with individuals with special needs or, or accommodations in that sort of way, both in the bar 
And then just, you know, I know that's obviously a subject area too of mm -hmm. many people's practices, but I was wondering more like in the idea, you know, with the bar with lawyers with disabilities and special needs. Yes, absolutely. Uh, special needs and disabilities is is definitely one of our uh, one of our topics that we are looking at. And um, Arnell, did you have anything else with that? Just basically, uh, but many of you may know Matthew Dietz. Matthew Dietz is also an ex officio member of the committee, and he deals he's in specialty actually uh, working with persons with disabilities. Uh, we also, thank you, <laughs> we also um, have in the definition that uh, persons with disabilities are a focal point for us. That takes up um, a whole gamut of things. So have we started to really target in universally on all of the types of disabilities? No. But as they are brought to our attention, we begin to work on those issues. So now that you've mentioned um, this specific area, it will be specifically added to our list and we'll start to give that to one of the subcommittees so that the subcommittee can begin to address ways in which we may be able to provide additional information throughout the bar. Yeah. We did do a get involved video that's on our website uh, and we did have um, a, a CODA sign on the video and we're working on getting that video uh, transcribed as well so that we've got the captions on the bottom of the video. Those, so those are definitely things that we are uh, very cognizant of. Any other questions? No, okay, thank you guys.